Hey, Vlad here from DevInsideU.com. Welcome to another video in the book review series. Today we're reviewing functional programming for models with Scala Z, written by Sam Halliday. It's a tricky one. Let's get right to it. Before we begin, I would like to ask you to leave the drama at the door. We're focusing only on the technology. In fact, we're only focusing on the book about the technology. Cool? Cool. Let's start with a TLDR of the functional programming library's history in relation to Scala, of course. At the beginning, there was Scala Z, which ported purely functional data structures from Haskell to Scala in order to augment its standard library. It's a bit hard to track down when exactly it was created. I believe it was around 2010 or shortly before that, about five years later for reasons irrelevant to this review, an alternative was created, which was and still is called CATS, as a pun on category theory. That said, Scala Z is still alive and kicking. The latest stable release was just a couple of months ago, and there are also snapshots laying around from just a couple of weeks ago as well. And that's the end of the TLDR. Functional programming for models with Scala Z was written by Sam Halliday in 2018. Sam is a well-known figure in the Scala community as an open source contributor and obviously as a book author. Among other things, he was the creator of Enzyme, the predecessor to Metals or, in fact, language servers in general. By the way, don't tell anyone, but a little birdie told me that Enzyme might or might not make its comeback someday. The book is around 300 pages long, which are divided into nine chapters, and there is a bit of a bonus chapter in the end with a cheat sheet for type classes. It is available on LeanPub, and it is not only free as in freedom, but also free as in beer. That said, I encourage you to support education in all shapes and forms, so feel free to move the price ladder somewhat to the right. This also reminds me that this video is supported only by you or people like you, so I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of my patrons. Thank you. Now, the target audience for this book is someone who wants to know how to write large, purely functional programs. Even though there is a lot of general knowledge about functional programming, the book is focused on Scala Z for obvious reasons. It's in the title. There are caveats related to the target audience, though, which I will mention by the end of the video. Let's get to the content. I remember being surprised by how practical the first couple of pages of this book were. It literally starts off with, this is how you abstract over futures. I really liked that at the time. I felt like I was the perfect target audience for this. In fact, futures are not considered purely functional, but beginning the book with them was by design. The idea was to get started with something familiar, and I quote, this book is designed to be read from cover to cover in order presented, with a rest between chapters. Earlier chapters encourage coding styles that we will later discredit, similar to how we learn Newton's theory of gravity as children and progress to Riemann, Einstein, Maxwell if we become students of physics. At this point, I should probably mention that Sam did his PhD in mathematical physics, which makes this book somewhat challenging to comprehend. The first few chapters are very fast-paced. Reading them felt like being thrown into the water. Here is how you abstract our futures. But futures are bad, so we need I.O. And now we need full comprehensions. And if you use future of option, or even I.O. of option, sticking them into a full comprehension requires some gymnastics. And so we need modern transformers. And all of these things happen in the first 20 pages of the book. What follows are two chapters, which start with a design of a purely functional, full-blown application written in the tagless final style, which was only briefly explained. In these two chapters, among other things, we get into testing, without the state monad or wrap though. The book continues with this will improve it later style. We also get into handling data with GADTs. The book doesn't try to hide the truth from us. There is talk about products and co-products, or category theory in general, and even the Curry Howard Lamba correspondence. One cool aspect of the book is that it frequently makes some very interesting deep dives into Scala itself, whether it's the desugaring of full comprehensions or variants or the implicit resolution a topic which very few people understand in depth. Chapters 5 and 6 explore Scala Z in detail. Remember how I said how practical this book starts out? Well, in these two chapters, we dive a little bit too deep, in my opinion. We get to things like comonads, bifunctors, high accounted eithers, natural transformations, and even some exotic collections like the finger trees, for instance. The seventh chapter is about advanced monads. We get trampolines, monotransformers, monotransformer library, aka MTL, 
free monads, coyoneras, and I'm gonna stop right there. Chapter 8 is about typeless derivation, with subchapters about shapeless and magnolia. The ninth and last chapter attempts to put everything learned so far together in order to finish the application studied many chapters before. It uses HTTP4S and Blaze for that. And that's pretty much all there is about the content, apart from the fact that, as I already mentioned, there's a type class cheat sheet at the very end. Now let's get to the actual review, and I'm afraid that it's going to be quite a bit negative this time. I contemplated whether I should make this video for quite some time. In fact, I sat down once to write the script for it and decided not to do it. One week later, evidently, I changed my mind. Let's start with the good parts. The author clearly knew both function programming and Scala's ad in and out. The book is very detailed. All chapters are covered in extreme depth, and I felt like there was no stone left unturned. And the good thing about it is the fact that, as I already mentioned, it's free both as in freedom and as in beer. Let's get to the slightly less good parts. First of all, I have no idea how this book is for. It's packed full of content, and I wouldn't recommend it to beginners because it's just too much. In fact, it's so much that if it was up to me, I had not called it for mortals. It feels more like a crash course to everything there is to know about functional programming and even how we got there. I wouldn't recommend it to advanced users either, simply because I didn't find it practical enough. It covers way too much unnecessary information that only maybe library authors care about. Real talk, Sam has a PhD, so this book is very dense. You could relatively easily take the content of this book and convert it into multiple, potentially slightly shorter ones. I would have found this approach to be more fruitful from a pedagogic perspective. Because it's so dense, it makes Scala look like a complicated language. Imagine reading a book for mortals and then finding information about the Yoneta lemma in there. Technically, the word lemma was not used. I searched. But still, mortals don't even know what a lemma is. Secondly, and this point is only half negative, the book hasn't been updated, but then again it came out only three years ago, so there's still hope. Another thing is the fact that most companies use CAT instead of Scala's ad these days. However, and this is exactly why this point is only half negative, the majority of the knowledge that you gain from this book, or Scala's ad in general, is transferable to CATs. The syntax might be slightly different in some cases though. Also, Scala's ad uses a lot of symbolic operators. And so, on one hand, it's not such a big deal that it's a slightly outdated book which covers a less popular library. However, it is a big deal because today this book doesn't exist in a vacuum. These days there are many alternatives to learning functional programming in Scala, both from a theoretical and practical standpoint. I've covered a couple of them in the previous videos, so you might want to check them out. By the way, both the Red Book and Scala with Scats were already out when FP for Mortals came out. In fact, FP for Mortals recommends the Red Book. Another, by the way, the cover for FP for Mortals is blue, so it is sometimes compared to the Red Book because of that. I wouldn't compare them this way if I were you, though. I believe it's closer to Practical Functional Programming in Scala by Gabriel Volpe, the one that I reviewed a couple of videos back. I think they're more close to each other simply because both of them create a full-blown, purely functional application written in the Tegla's final style. And we finally arrive at my last negative point, which is the snarkiness that, in my opinion, does not belong into educational material. It's actually somewhat of a problem these days because we live in a world of self-publishing. For instance, the video that you're watching right now does not have a publisher. So yeah, I think this book could have used a more conservative publisher. So would I recommend this book? Again, I wouldn't know to whom. In fact, I give it a 6 out of 10 and since it's free, let's add another point on top. So let's make it a 7. I want to be clear about this. It's not because it's bad content. It's just that I find that the structure could be improved. I found it very hard to digest or in fact even to remember what it was about. I almost had to reread it entirely just to make this review. I hope you find this review helpful and even though I don't necessarily recommend this book, it's free so you might want to check it out and make this decision for yourself and I'll see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from DevInsideYou.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you wish to contribute to tech education, consider supporting me on GitHub sponsors or Patreon, whichever you prefer, and that's watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.